Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the derivative and we're going to define it as this limit of a difference quotient. So we're going to look at the fundamental definition of a derivative. So again, let's consider a function. It looks like a parabola. And let's consider a point A on that function. So you can think of this point A um, as, uh, and actually the A as the kind of x value and y value all mixed up together. So let's pick a point P1 on the function as well, and then let's draw the line between P1 and A. And so we see that that line is going between those two points. <clears throat> Ultimately, we might be trying to find ourselves a tangent line at that point A, um, and that's not a good approximation for the tangent line. But we notice that on the x-axis there is some distance um, H1 between the x value for A and the x value for the point P1. So let's move the point P1 a little bit closer to A on the graph, and let's call that point P2. And then again, let's draw a line between those two points. And the line's hitting the graph at two places. This is a secant line. Um, as we said in the last video, this would represent what we would call the um, average rate of change between those two points, that slope would be. Um, and notice that this is probably a little bit better approximation to what might be a tangent line at the point A. We notice that the distance between A, the x distance between A and P2, is smaller than that x distance was between A and P1. So let's try this again. Let's move our point, uh, say, P3. Now we move P1 to P2, now to P3, a little bit closer to A again. Let's draw the line between the two points. And again, we're looking for an approximation to our tangent line at A. This certainly looks better than the line between A and P1 and better than the line between A and P2. Let's consider that x distance. So the distance on the x-axis between A and P3 has gotten even smaller. We call that H3. Let's do this again. If we do, now we have a point P4, which is yet still closer to the point A on the graph. We'll draw that secant line between those two, which is a red line. And now we're starting to see that it's getting pretty difficult to see that it's only hitting the graph at two points. And then here's our distance, h4, which is the distance between a and p4 on the x-axis. So let's look at a few things before we go another step. When we started, we had a distance h1 on the x-axis, then h2, h3, and x4. Notice that those h distances are getting smaller, so it's like we're thinking about them going to zero. Okay, let's try this one more time. And if we move that point p4 closer to a, we would notice that eventually it would get so close to A that we wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a secant line that went between A and some point elsewhere on that graph and the line that just touched the graph at the one point A. So it's sort of a limiting process that we've done here to get ourselves from that initial line between A and P1 all the way over to that blue line which is just a tangent line. And so we can think of the equation of the tangent line as y is equal to mx plus b. And the slope of the tangent line at the point is referred to as the instantaneous rate of change at that point. And so that instantaneous rate of change would be the slope of that tangent line. So if we generalize the previous example, we see that we took the limit as h approached 0 of that difference quotient and we got the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h is equal to the slope of the tangent line at the point x equals a. And if you recall from our previous video, we talked about how we got that difference quotient as represented by f of a plus h minus f of a over h. And so what we see now is just taking the limit as h goes to 0 of that difference quotient is the slope of the tangent line at the point x equals a. So the limit is also known as the derivative in calculus. So this limit of the difference quotient is called the derivative of f of x at x equals a. And the derivative is denoted by f prime of a. So with that little tick up at the top, we just say f prime of a. And so f prime of a is also the limit of that difference quotient. 
So we want to make some connections between terminology. So a derivative at a point x equals a is the same thing as the slope of the tangent line m at the point x equals a, which is also the same thing as the instantaneous rate of change at the point x equals a. So this is useful because when we're doing problems, we may be asked to do many different things, but we want to make sure that we understand that all of those would be just the same thing as finding um, any one of them. So you might have a problem that asks you to find the derivative. That might be a limit of the difference quotient. You might have a problem that asks you to find the slope of the tangent line at the point. That too is just a limit of the difference quotient. And certainly a problem that asks you to find the instantaneous rate of change at a point is just a limit of the difference quotient. So now let's consider what happens if the limit of the difference quotient does not exist at a point x equals a. Well, then the derivative does not exist at that point x equals a either. <clears throat> and so we say that f of x is non-differentiable at the point x equals a. So what does that mean mathematically? It means that if this limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h does not exist, then f of x is non-differentiable at x equals a. So there are some points for functions where you cannot find their derivatives, and that is determined by whether or not this limit above, that limit of the difference quotient, actually has a limit or if it does not exist. So let's consider an example. Let's find the derivative at the point x equals 0. Well, the first thing we might want to do is go ahead and do the limit of the difference quotient. So remember, we've talked about um, these steps. We want to write them out carefully. So we need f of x plus h, which in this case would be 1 over x plus h. We know that f of x is 1 over x. Now we need the difference. So that's 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x. Of course, this is going to require that we find a common denominator. And when we do that, we'll get that that's all equal to x minus the quantity of x plus h divided by x times x plus h. Collecting terms and simplifying, we get minus h over x times x plus h. So now we know we need to divide by h, which would be our next step. So we have minus the quantity h over x, plus, x times x plus h times 1 over h. Clearly the h's will cancel. And so we're ready to take the limit of the difference quotient. And when we do that, we have the limit as h goes to 0 of minus the quantity of 1 over x times x plus h. Sending h to 0 gives us minus 1 over x squared. So the derivative of my function f of x equals 1 over x is f prime of x equals minus 1 over x squared. But the problem asked us to find the derivative at x equals 0. And so when we go to plug x equals 0 into the derivative, we notice that we would have a 0 in the denominator, which we would not be allowed to do. And so therefore, this function does not have a derivative at x equals 0 because we know that f prime of 0 is undefined. And so x equals 0 is a point of non-differentiability for the function 1 over x. But then the question is, is, you know, we found that derivative for f of x, and did we do that for nothing? Well, no, we did not, because we know that that derivative was f prime of x equals one, minus 1 over x squared, which only has an issue at x equals 0, so it works fine for all other points. So let's consider another question. Find the slope of the tangent line to the function f of x, which is 1 over x above, at x equals 1. Well, recall that the slope of the tangent line is the same thing as the limit of the difference quotient, or the derivative, and we've already calculated our derivative. So the question really is saying to evaluate this derivative when x is equal to 1. So we plug 1 into the derivative and we get minus 1 over 1 squared, which is minus 1. And this would be the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1. So now we can find the equation of the tangent line if we like at x equals 1 because I know the slope. And I have an x value, so I should be able to get enough information to actually find the equation of that tangent line. So we know that the slope is equal to minus 1. And when x is equal to 1, I plug that into my function, and that gives me y is equal to 1. Because 1 divided by 1 is 1. 
And so we can find the equation of the line using the point slope formula. We have a slope, which is minus 1, and we know a point, which is 1, 1. When we do that, we get that y, the slope, uh, the y, the equation of the tangent line is equal to minus x plus 2. Notice that we do have a slope for this tangent line, which is minus 1, which is the instantaneous rate of change, or the derivative of our function, 1 over x, at the x value 1. Let's just take a look at the graphs of the function and its tangent line. So the red graph represents the function um, that should be 1 over x, and then the um, point x equals 1 is delineated by the yellow point there on the graph, and then the tangent line at that point is y equals minus x plus 2.